Hello. In today's uh, physiology video lecture, we shall try to understand the physiology of vision. Okay. So exactly the eye is functioning to perceive the light inside, process it, and how that light energy has been converted into an action potential. And this action potential has to be transmitted to the visual cortex in the brain. And in the brain, image interpretation takes place. So this phenomenon and the physiology behind it, we shall try to understand in this class. Now, before understanding a brief introduction regarding the structure of the eye. Okay, So remember students, uh, really we have to concentrate on the physiological aspect of the vision, not the structural aspect of the eye. Adre, physiological aspect in the Munche, it is very important to understand the structural aspect. Okay, so just two minutes on the structure of the eye. Kannana now consider the structure of the eye, if you consider, so we have three important uh, layers. Number one, yes, yes. yes. Number one, an outermost fibrous layer, a vascular layer, middle one, and a very important layer, that is the retina. It is the light-perceiving layer. Okay. Now, this is the structure of the eye. You can see this is the outermost sclera, and the color portion is called the choroid, and the innermost layer, so this inner white one is what is known as the retina. Okay. So this is the eyeball lens and ciliary body you can see here, suspended muscles and iris. You can see the iris part of it. Okay. So the light enters through here and there is accommodation in the lens for adjusting the light entering into the eye. And then the light gets transmitted through this and finally strikes the light sensitive layer that is the retina. So this is how the light enters and once the entry of light is regulated by this white portion of the eye called the cornea and falls under the lens and from the lens will be transmitted to the retina okay so the light that is transmitted to the retina how it is able to generate an action potential in the neurons that are present here and these has to be supplied to the brain okay so, and in the brain, there is interpretation of the image. Okay, so we shall uh, try to understand how exactly this process takes place in the eye. Now, so this is the four points regarding the structure of the eye. The outermost layer is this uh, fibrous layer. It has two important parts. The uh, front portion is called cornea and the surrounding eyeball, there is as clearer, most importantly, it functions as a protective covering for the eye. And the white portion of the eye, that is cornea, helps in allowing the light into the eye and also focus the light onto the lens. Okay, so this is a function of the cornea. Now, the middle layer, it is made up of three parts one is choroid, ciliary body, and iris. So, choroid helps in prevention of internal reflection of light. So once it enters through the lens and from the lens, it is entering in between before entering onto the retina, the light should not be get reflected. That will not create a clear cut image. Okay, so that will be done by choroid and ciliary body. Uh, this importantly brings about accommodation of the eye. So we, uh, we look at uh, different objects at different distances and different objects emit uh, different type of uh, light radiations and all that has to be adjusted by the lens. This adjustment of the lens uh, will be uh, done. Uh, that process contraction and relaxation of the lens is called accommodation. And this accommodation uh, process is mainly controlled by the ciliary body and the ciliary muscles. And then there is iris. It is a pigmented portion of the eye uh, present uh, suspended around the pupil. Okay, and um, this the fun main function of the iris is to regulate the amount of light that is entering into the eye. So suddenly there may be um, high intensity light that may enter, or there is very low light that is entering. All this 
uh, will be uh, the intensity of light that is entering into the eye will be uh, regulated by the iris. Now, this layer is important for us for today's topic of physiology of vision, the innermost layer that is the retina. Retina is mainly made up of uh, three important uh, layers. Now, this light sensitive layer has three important uh, layers. Now, which are they? We shall see. Now, number one, there is a pigmented epithelium and there is a light sensitive layer. This light sensitive portion again has the neurons, photosensitive neurons, which we call them as rods and bones. And there are bipolar uh, cells, by, this is called bipolar cell layer and innermost ganglionic layer. Okay, So the pigmented epithelium is followed by these three important layers. And in um, retina, we come across, uh, there is this portion called as a blind spot or optic disc. And this will uh, not, um, it is not sensitive to light. And there is macular lutea for the centralis, which is very, very sensitive to light. Now, this is the picture showing the here. You can see the pigmented epithelium. And these are the rods and bones, photosensitive cells. And this is the bipolar layer and this is the ganglionic layer. Remember, the light enters in this direction from the lens. It passes through the ganglionic layer and goes to the bipolar layer. And then it reaches the rods and cones. Now, depending on whether uh, the bright light is entering or dim light is entering, the respective photosensitive cells will function. If it is dim light, rods are uh, very sensitive to the dim light. And if it is bright light, cones are very sensitive. And you do know that the cones are responsible for colored vision. Okay. So with this background of uh, structural aspects, let us move on to the physiological aspect of the eye, physiological aspect of the vision. Okay. Now, uh, some structural details I have given here. So let us come to this point where I have told you the light enters to the ganglionic layer first and then bipolar layer and then reaches the receptor cells. Now, in this direction, the light moves, but this light uh, that is entering into the photoreceptor cell will be able to generate an action potential that action potential that is generated travels in the reverse direction. If this is the direction of entry of light, the direction of movement of the nerve impulse, the action potential that is generated is opposite direction. It is from the photoreceptor cells to the bipolar cells to the ganglionic cells. Okay. And uh, this I have already told you, rods are sensitive for dim light and cones are sensitive for bright vision. Okay, so here we shall start with the physiological aspect. Now the physiology of vision, uh, which are the three uh, important uh, portions which we study the vision, vision physiology. Number one, photo transduction, where the light enters into the eye and this light entering into the eye reaches the retina and in the retina there is generation of nerve impulse okay so this is the first step now this nerve impulse that is generated has to be transmitted uh, students if you remember propagation generation and conduction of the nerve impulse we have already discussed uh, in the uh, neurophysiology in the same way the neurons the rods and cones are nothing but the specialized neurons they are sensitive for light so due to the light stimulus, the there is generation of the action potential and that action potential will be transmitted to the optic nerve and optic nerve to the visual cortex of the brain. And that is the third, third portion of uh, physiology of vision that is called as visual perception. Now, so if you look at the rods and cones, which are the light sensitive uh, neurons we call them as photosensitive cells also 
they have what are known as photosensitive pigments okay so these pigments are very very important for bringing about the phototransduction reaction now what is what are these pigments made up of each pigment that is present in rods and cones made up of two important portions number one opsin and a retinol what is this opsin opsin is a transmembrane like protein and there are two important opsins one is photopsin another one is scotopsin okay so photopsin along with a retinol present in the cones and scotopsin along with retinol present in the rods okay so what is this retinol it's a, 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 a structure or a cofactor that is derived from vitamin a remember the retinol is consistently supplied by the pigmented epithelium that we have seen in the retina okay now whenever the these pigments light sensitive pigments they have a specific structure but due to the striking of the ray light this light sensitive pigment undergoes a structural change the structural change that occurs in the light sensitive pigment is responsible for bringing about the action potential remember once the light strikes the photopigments have a specific structure and this photopigment undergoes structural change and the change in the structure of the photopigment isomerism results in generation of the action potential okay so that much is important to be uh, remember now so if you look at the photosensitive pigment two portions i said one is a retinol another one is a opsin now this retinol this retinol that is present in the photosensitive pigments it is always present in the form of cis retinol okay so at rest when light is not striking the uh, photosensitive uh, pigments at that time the retinol part of the photosensitive pigments it is in the form of cis okay so on light striking on light striking the cis form of the retinol what happens this cis form gets converted to trans retinol okay so the conversion of cis retinol to trans retinol results in what is known as bleaching okay so what is this bleaching now at this point when the light strikes when the cis form gets converted into the trans form this is no more ready to accept any other light that is entering okay at this point where the opsin is not ready to accept the new photon that is known as the bleaching part of the vision okay as you see here the opsin cannot respond to light energy until it's get converted into cis form remember if the opsin is in cis form it can perceive the light if it gets converted into the trans form it cannot perceive the light and that we call it as the bleaching now once this is done there is generation of the action potential now as soon as the generation of action potential is there the trans form converted back into the cis form again okay so this reformation of trans form into the cis form what we call it as regeneration okay so remember so we have seen there is conversion from cis form to trans form and again trans form to the cis form so this cyclical process cyclical reaction so this is due to the striking of the light now so this cyclical reaction is catalyzed by this enzyme known as retinal isomerase okay so why this has to occur this is to generate action okay so let us see i have written a diagram here which will help you to understand better so now whenever there is reformation of the photopigment the vitamin a will be supplied by the uh, pigmented layer 
and this cis to transform results in, as I have told you, action potential. Generation of action potential is due to the depolarization. All this we have discussed in neurophysiology. Now see, same thing, I have shown the picture here. So when at rest, when the light is not striking, the uh, photopigment is in the form of 11 cis retinol toxin at dark. Now the light strikes this molecule. When the light strikes, this gets converted into a transform and gets bleached. Once this is done, there is generation of the action potential. After this, the transform again reconverted into the cis form. Okay, so that's the regeneration, two important steps. Now, see here, uh, this is a rod. Inside the rod, there is uh, discs that are present. On this disc, we see the uh, presence of the proteins called photopigments. And these photopigments have two portions. This blue portion is the uh, retinol, uh, sorry, the opsin. And this is the retinol. You can see here, the, if you look at the cis form, it has a bent here. And once it gets converted, due to the striking of the light, once it gets converted into transform, it becomes a straight chain. Okay. Now, this conversion, this isomeric conversion of cis to transform is responsible for generation of action potential. Now, uh, I have created a flow chart here to make you understand better. And what happens, the light strikes, enters through the uh, eye um, accommodation of the lens. And from there, it strikes onto the retinal layer. And as you all know, retinal layer, the light enters from the ganglionic layer, then bipolar layer, and then retina. Uh, that is photosensitive layer. So this, this photosensitive layer has two cells. One is rods, another one is cones. Okay. Now, uh, let us see what happens. So the light with 380 to 720 is sensitive for that. There is a refraction of light once entering into the eye, the bending of the light rays is there. And according, depending on the intensity of the light or brightness of the light, accommodation of the lens takes place. A lens is a flexible lens that we have. So it can contract and relax based on the intensity of the light. Now, whatever the light rays that enter, all of them will be converged and are presented onto the retina. So in the retina, there is photochemical reaction. As in the first step, let us see what happens in case of uh, rods. So the kind of vision that we see in rods is called dim light vision, or it is also known as scotopic vision. Now, the rods have photosensitive pigment that is called as a rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is made up of scotopsin plus retina. Okay? Now, once the light strikes, dim light strikes the rods, there is enzyme activation and produce an important uh, molecule called as transducing. So when the dim light strikes, there is production of an important molecule called as transducing. And this transducing activates an enzyme called as phosphodiesterase. And this phosphodiesterase hydrolyzes the psychic GMP and these three steps, transducing, activating phosphodiesterate and activating cyclic GMP, it stops, remember here, it stops, it is different in neurophysiology that what we have discussed, it stops the entry of uh, sodium ions into the rods, okay? So as the sodium ion entry stops into the rods, there is more and more negativity in the uh, cytoplasm as a result there is hyperpolarization. This uh, uh, forms a new bonoid signal. Okay, so the hyperpolarization results in formation of a nerve impulse. And this nerve impulse through the optic nerve, it will be transmitted to the, through the optic nerve, it will be transmitted to the visual cortex that is present in the brain. What about the cones? So in the cones, they have a photopigment called as iodopsin. Remember, this is called a 
rods it is called scotopic vision here it is called photopic vision or color vision photopsin is there plus retinol now here um, we do know that the cones are responsible for colored vision now what is bringing about a perception of different colors you can see it depends on which cone is stimulated among the three and combination of three so there are three important types of cones which are sensitive to three are different colors and three among these three different colors which among the three are stimulated based on that the eye will perceive the color now which are the different colors we have discussed in the previous slide so once the light strikes the cone bright light strikes the cone the enzyme activation takes place transducin is produced same phosphodiesterase and cyclic gmp gets hydrolyzed the phosphodiesterase which is bringing about the cyclic gmp hydrolysis again stops the flow of sodium ions into the cones which brings about hyperpolarization which generates the action potential okay and again this action potential will be conveyed through the optic now to the brain okay so this is uh, the same kind of uh, um, uh, physiological reactions we see both in rods and cones the only thing is they are sensitive for a uh, light of different intensity now let us see this action potential that is uh, generated from the rods and cones will be transmitted to the bipolar neurons and from there it is transmitted to the ganglionic neurons as we all know in the neurophysiology as we have uh, studied the impulse gets transmitted to the synapse okay so the synaptic transmission takes place activation of bipolar neurons from their ganglionic neurons and finally reaches the optic nerve okay so which uh, leaves from the optic disc at the blind spot all in the optic nerve molecule the action potential travels or the nerve impulse travels to the visual cortex of the brain okay so you do light to uh, kannana strike madadaga what happens is uh, this now this is how the nerve impulse travels this is the light entering in strikes the retinal part and there is generation of the action potential travels through the optic nerve reaches the optic chiasma and then this portion is called lateral geniculate body from there finally it reaches the visual cortex and visual cortex uh, interprets the type of image that is formed if there is an image present here and this image will be interpreted in this region okay let us move on now what happens when light is not striking the eye so in the darkness there is production remember when light strike there was production of transducin in the darkness there is production of recovering and this recovering activates a secondary messenger called gonadotropin cyclase and this in fact catalyzes the synthesis of cyclic gmp recovering activates gonadotropin cyclase and the synthesis of cyclic gmp now the sodium channels open and so when the light strike we have discussed about the rods and cones the sodium channel flow stop, stops now here due to the presence of gonadotropin cyclase and cyclic gmp hydrolysis in the darkness what is happening more and more sodium is entering into the rods and cones as a result there is flow of sodium ions into the rods and cones this is we call it as dark current please do remember dark current bleaching regeneration all these uh, points now um, this entry of sodium ions into the rods and cones stimulates formation of an neurotransmitter called as glutamic acid amino acid which acts as a neurotransmitter so glutamic acid which is inhibitory in function okay so the inhibitory nature of the glutamic acid causes hyperpolarization of the bipolar neurons the bipolar neurons get hyperpolarized this stops the light stimulus not be received by the retina so due to this the light stimulus 
not be uh, received by the retina. So this is what happens in the darkness. Understood? Now, in the physiological aspect, we have understood how the light energy is converted into a neuronal signal and how that neuronal signal has been transmitted to the visual cortex in the brain. Okay. So now light entering, accommodation in the lens, refraction, reaching the uh, retina and in the retina there are Okay, there's a ganglionic layer, bipolar layer, photosensitive layer, and pigmented epithelium. Light enters through the ganglionic layer, reaches the bipolar layer, reaches the um, photos receptors. Photoreceptors are rods and cones. They do contain different pigments like uh, 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 photosensitive pigments, scotopsin, photopsin, and retinol. Retinol is present in uh, the cis form on light striking. It gets converted into the trans form. With this conversion isomeric transformation of cis to transform generates a um, action potential and in the reverse direction from the photoreceptor cells to the bipolar cells to the ganglionic cell the um, action potential transmits to the synapse and finally it reaches the optic nerve and from optic nerve it goes to the optic chiasma lateral geniculate body and then reaches the visual cortex in the brain where exactly there is interpretation of the uh, image that is the third step okay students i hope you all understood thank you all for listening to me these are the references thank you all.